Slavery officially ended in the U.S. in 1865 with the adoption of the 13th Amendment to the Constitution. But its effects have persisted, contributing to disparities between white and black populations. Because of this, many say that amends must be made for the wrong that was done, and they are long overdue. Today we launch Mayors Organized for Reparations and Equity, or more. So each of us does something more makes more of a commitment to justice, more of a commitment to wealth building, more of a commitment to a society that includes everybody, more of a commitment to a country that faces its past because we know our prosperity in the future depends on it. Los Angeles Mayor Eric Garcetti and mayors of 10 other cities are taking the first step by pledging to pay reparations for slavery to a small group of black residents in their cities. When I hear about mayors taking a proactive step to provide reparations to people who are injured, it's an acknowledgement um, that municipalities also participated in the horrific acts that have injured um, Black um, communities and Black people um, over the course of American history. Um, we did not arrive at a wealth gap um, where white um, families have about 10 times the amount of wealth as black families simply because of federal policy, um, not just because of slavery, but uh, because of Jim Crow racism also and historic discrimination in criminal justice and housing. Yet discussing the issue of reparations at the federal level has always been partisan political football. Perry says there have been many examples of reparations efforts, both in the U.S. and in other countries. When it comes to African Americans, we say, no, 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 who will pay for it? I didn't own any slaves. And all these lame excuses. Remember, the federal government will pay. We provided reparations for the Japanese in turn. We provided um, reparations for Native Americans internationally. There was reparations for um, those who injured because of the Holocaust. Um, so we've seen it internationally. We've even seen it at, at reparations given to 9-11 victims. The only time we don't agree with reparations is when it's talking about black folk. Two months after the attack on Pearl Harbor, which prompted the U.S. entry into World War II, then President Franklin Delano Roosevelt issued an executive order against Japanese Americans. Many rightfully so call this one of the darkest uh, times in American history when it, close to 120,000 Japanese Americans were uh, forcibly removed from their homes um, on the West Coast and placed into uh, concentration camps uh, scattered throughout the uh, country, although uh, largely in some very remote areas of the United States on the Great Plains, um, a couple in California, and even as far east as Arkansas. Uh, but a lot of this was um, rooted in basically wartime hysteria, the, um, the claim, fa false claims by the government that Japanese Americans were a security threat to this country. Nearly five decades later, in 1988, Congress passed and former President Ronald Reagan signed legislation that recognized and apologized for the mistake and provided a cash payment to anyone who was interned. Payment was ultimately um, was $20,000 per, per person. Uh, they did have to be surviving, um, that if someone had been incarcerated and passed away, um, they would not then be eligible for um, a payment or their survivors would not be eligible for a payment. Other countries have also acknowledged and paid for their past sins, including Germany and the United Kingdom. As of 2020, the German government has paid more than $80 billion in Holocaust reparations as a result of negotiations with national and international Jewish organizations. In 2013, the United Kingdom apologized and agreed to pay compensation to thousands of veterans of the Mau Mau nationalist uprising in Kenya, which was brutally suppressed by the British colonial government in the 1950s. The Kenyan Human Rights Commission estimated that 90,000 Kenyans were killed or maimed and 160,000 detained. In Kenya, 
Mau Mau veterans and campaigners welcomed the apology at the time, but said the compensation of 300,000 shillings or about 3,500 US dollars per victim was not enough for the pain, suffering, and long term effects the community has endured. A feeling shared by many victims of atrocities in general. While reparations can come in many forms, some people oppose cash compensation, arguing that any money paid is blood money. Mariama Diallo, VOA News, Washington.